Now, this is a valid solution, but here we are required to do an algorithm that runs in M plus N runtime complexity, and obviously we're not covering that, so we need to think of something new, sadly. The trickiest part here is that it's not only just two pointers, we're going to use three. So let's see how this is going to be done in code. Greetings, everyone. Today we're doing a problem that was given by Microsoft in a coding interview. We're using the platform lead code, and the problem is number 88, merge sorted array. Now, I'm not going to read the problem since last time I did read it, and quite frankly, the video turned out to be very long and very not exciting. Nobody wants to see you read in the internet. So I'm going to explain the problem and I'm going to go with this example one. And sorry if my writing is going to be bad in this one because for some reason my tablet stopped working and I cannot make it work. So let's actually see the problem. Now we're having, as you can see, two arrays and these two arrays are called number one and number two respectively. And they are holding some numbers that need to be merged into one array. Now that's pretty much it. The interesting part is that uh, we cannot use, actually, I'm going to go to we cannot in a bit of a second. Now, nums1 is holding enough elements to accommodate all of the elements in nums2. And this is because we cannot just take nums2, take num nums1, put them into a nums3 array that we're going to create, sort that, and return it, right? This is not allowed. What we need to do is to take the nums2 elements and actually put them into nums1 places and we need to keep the sorting that's pretty much it m and three denote how many elements do we have in both of the arrays as you can see here we have three and here we have three as well from left to right looking in nums one we have three elements and everything else is going to be no zeros now these zeros do not denote that we don't have a number they denote that we have a space so we have three space here as you can see three x's for the numbers in num2 let's see how it's going to happen now, one thing that I can come to notice when I am in an interview is that um, you are not against the interview itself, right? You always would like to talk with them, would like to ask them some clarification questions if you have any. And here, whenever I want to clarificate something, right, I go to related topics. As you can see, in related topics, we have two pointers sorting an array. And if I'm taking this two pointers method, obviously two pointers means that if I have, uh, let's say, one line and second line over here, I am going to have two variables pointing at two different locations in the two different lines. So this is the two pointer method. When, when I'm taking this and I put them into perspective with nums1 and nums2, what I can say is I'm going to write them down and this is going to be n1 and n2 over here is going to have what was it? 256, I believe. I cannot see it now, but I, I would assume it's 256. And let me put the brackets. So I usually go, from, and every single human being goes from left to right, and not everyone, sorry, but most of us. And if I go from left to right, as you can see, I have two pointers over here. Now, what I need to be checking is, am I, if I say P1 and P2, I'm going to check is P1 greater than P2? It's not. So obviously I do not need this number to be in my num1 array, right? I'm just going to go forward. I'm going to go here. I'm going to check, is this greater than this? It's not. Is this greater than this? It is, meaning that this number should appear on the left side of three. And this can now come, go back, check the other number, rotate and allocate. And it's going to be very difficult and cumbersome. So the solution, and actually a very nice and interesting solution, I really like this problem, is the following. Use three pointers. I'm going to show you what I mean. And we're going to start, I always, always emphasize on that, how important it is. Think outside of the box, or at least try to think from a different perspective. Go from right to left. Now, I'm going to place a pointer over here, right? This is going to be my first. So I'm going to call this P1. I'm going to place P2 over here. And I'm going to place P3 over here. So the first question is, what do these actually annotate? So what is, this, what is the meaning of this? P1, P2, and P3. Now, P1 is going to start from the right to the left in num2. And this is, by the way, N2. And this is N1. And this is going to be used because I want to know the highest number in num array 2, right? Since I want to keep actually the, the sorted property, I need to be sure that I am going to start either from the lowest or from the highest, right? Now, we already covered the left from right part. I cannot think of any better solution, but 
let's go try from right to left. P3 is going to denote where I'm actually going to set the number that's going to be the highest in N2. Why, why is that? Well, because I need to have my N2 numbers if uh, these are going to be zeros and they're going to be accommodated for N2, right? They can accommodate in N2, these zeros. It means that I need to be sure that this is going to be the biggest number if I'm going to place it on the rightest spot. And in order for me to be sure that this is going to be the biggest number, keep in mind that we have two, I need another, so this is going to be P2, and I'm going to hold, okay, what is the biggest number in N1? What is the biggest number in N2? And where I'm going to be set them, P3. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to check, here's the logic. I'm going to check if six is actually greater than three, it is. What does this mean? It means that six needs to be sitting on the right side of three, right? In order to keep the sorted property. So I'm just going to say, all right, the zero is going to become immediately six. P3 is going to change position, positions, <laughs> positions. And P1 is also going to change positions now because um, obviously we have already figured out what six is going to be. I'm just going to remove it, I don't need it. Now I'm going to check the same thing, is five greater than three? It is, this means that five needs to be sitting on the right side of three. Again, I'm just going to say, all right, this is not going to be zero anymore, it's going to be accommodated for five, and I'm going to switch positions with P3 and P1, correct? Now, you can see that I've come to the lowest point, the lowest number in N2. But here, I still have the highest number in P N1, right? And P2 denotes that I'm going to have the number three. So the logic is the following. I'm going to check, all right, is two greater than three? It is not. So this means that it needs to be sitting on the left side of three. So how can I actually do that? Well, I can say, all right, this zero here is not going to be zero, it's going to be three. So three is going to come here. This is going to be equal to three, right? And P2 now is going to switch positions because we have already covered what is the highest number in N1. N we have covered that, we have changed the position, and now I need to say, all right, the second highest number, please. The second highest number is going to be two, and P3 again is going to move on this position. So it's a bit cumbersome here, but here is P3 right now, here is P2, and let's write them with let's write them with different colors as i said sorry my tablet stopped working and that is why i have a very difficult time writing and boom there we go i think this is actually very easy seenable now i'm going to switch with black color and as you can see here i'm going to switch all right is two bigger than two it is not so it doesn't really matter if i'm going to put it to the right or to the left it doesn't matter I'm going to put it on the P3 spot because P3 is the spot that I am actually going to iterate around and I'm going to use it as a placeholder for my numbers. So this three immediately gets deleted and gets to be a two. Again, P3 is going to the P2 spot, right? And let's write this with, yeah, with, uh, oops. I want to write it with red just so we can see it better. Where is red? P3 is going to be on the P2 spot, but now P1, and I should go with blue, P1 is outside of the range, so we have finished with N2, and which is going to return the final array. Now, if you have kept track so far, you're going to see that N1 is 1, 2, 2, 3, 5, 6, by the time I'm finished with N2. That's pretty much the problem. That's what we need to code up, and before we actually get to code, if you haven't understood that, Partly my fault because uh, my writing is horrible currently. But rewind the video, rewatch it, and try to understand this logic because the code is really just nothing more. The idea was hard, but the code is actually pretty simple. All right, so let's go and start coding it in JavaScript. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to write on the keyboard, so it's going to be a bit clicky. Instead, I'm, I've written it down here on the right, and I'm going to explain it with you, and we're going to go together through the code. I think this is going to be a better solution because it's going to be quicker. I'm not going to write, I'm not going to make any typos. You can tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me what you think about in the comment section below. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is to create these. First array item, second array item, and last index. The last index is going to be in our knowledge P3, the second array item is going to be P1, and the first array item is going to be the P2. Do you remember when I said that we need to keep three pointers, the first one tracking the highest in nums one, the second one tracking the highest in nums two, and the third one is going to be tracking 
these zeros over here that we're going to be used in order to place items from nums2. That's pretty much what we're going to do. So next what we want to do is we're going to start looping, we're going to start working, but how much do I need to work? Well, obviously, and I skip that here, obviously I need to go until my second array is empty, right? If I have an empty array here too, nums2, it means that all of the array, all of the numbers that need to be in nums1 are already in it and I do not need to begin working or to continue working because so we might not get an empty array from the beginning, of course. Now, this thing is going to be a bit more difficult here. If first array item, again, keep in mind of the analogy that I've drawn uh, two minutes ago. If the first array item is bigger or equal than zero, right? It means that we are having something available, meaning that uh, this is either going to be one, two, three, the first array item is the P2 here. So we are still having space in nums1 array to actually place items. And then we're going to check if nums1 of first array item is bigger than nums2 of second array item, right? And I'm going to draw it like this. Again, one, two, three. I'm going to have a couple of zeros and two, five, six. If this item is bigger than this item, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm asking. I'm asking, is this item bigger than this one? And this is going to be P3. So P3, P2, again, P1, the completely, completely the same analogy. I am going to place this thing over here, right? Move this thing to the left and move this thing to the left because I have already carried the number. And you can see here, nums of last index, which is going to be P3, this is going to be our P3 over here, is gonna be equal to nums1 of first array, meaning P2. The first array is going to be P2. I'm going to basically say, all right, the P3 is equal to P2 now, and I'm going to move both of them to the left because they have already finished work. I'm not going to be moving P1, however, because P1 is still not into the array where it needs to be. So obviously I'm not finished working with P1. And the final part, of course, is the else statement saying, all right, if that is not the case, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place, again, I'm going to write it down, one, two, three, zero, 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 and two, five, six. So this is the following, this number, is bigger than this number. P2 is pointing at the biggest number at array number one. P1 is going to be pointing at the biggest array number at number two. And P3 is going to be the last index. If this, however, is bigger, then do the following. I'm going to take this six, place it over here. And then I have already done work with P1, gonna move it to the left. I have already done work with P3, gonna move it to the left. That's pretty much it. We're moving last index, we're moving second array item. So that's pretty much P1 and P3 over here. That's pretty simple. We have already filled the array and I think this is this should be it. I know that this should be it. So let's actually see the results. Accept it over here and sorry about this because I'm on a new monitor as well. <laughs> let's go ahead and submit, see if this has actually done any good. All right, and there we go, success. So this is the problem. Again, very simple if statements. If you haven't understood them, Go and check again the drawing. It's very important to understand the idea because if you understand the idea, then this should be pretty easy and pretty simple for you. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.